everyone, my name is Freya and welcome to my broom closet. Today I want to discuss some rules to follow to help you to stay in the broom closet. So when I first became a broom closet witch, I devised myself a set of rules to always follow in order to help me stay in the broom closet and not get found out. So today I'm going to pass on some of these rules as well as extra ones that people have suggested to me. So here are 20 rules to follow to help you stay in the broom closet. I've got to say that rule 11 has saved me more times than I'd like to admit. So please stick around for the whole thing and I really hope this video helps you out. Let's get into the video. Rule number one is to prepare everything in advance. This is super important in order to pull off casting spells and doing things in the broom closet. The basic premise of this rule is for anything that you do, look out for times when you'll be alone and look for opportunities to get ingredients. So basically, anything you do, plan ahead and prepare. Rule number two is after you finished, pack everything away and make sure everything was the way it was as soon as possible. So as soon as you've cast a spell or whatever ritual, tidy up as soon as you can as soon as you've finished. Rule number three is to make sure you have valid excuses for things. So for this rule, make sure you check out my excuses video where I discuss lots of excuses for different things as a broom closet witch. But in general, it helps to have a genuine interest in science, space and the soda system so you don't look like a total nut job when you're looking up moon phases and planet pos positionings and things like that. It also helps to have a genuine interest in ancient mythology, so reading books like Percy Jackson or uh, watching four movies or something like that kind of gives you a good excuse that you got into mythology that way. Also, having an interest in Dungeons and Dragons gives great excuse for lots of different things like looking up spells, mythological creatures and deities and things like that. Harry Potter fans also have a great excuse for looking up different spells and incantations and also a lot of Harry Potter merch can double up as witchy tools. Like I said, more excuses will be listed in my excuses video which can be found in an iCard or in the description. Number four is to hide everything and change your hiding spots at regular intervals. So I've already made a video on hiding your tools and ingredients in the broom closet so make sure you check that out. This rule also applies to your digital resources. If you have a digital book of shadows, make sure that that is well hidden too. I will link some advice on hiding a digital book of shadows in the description below for you. Rule number five is to back up everything. So make sure you have a digital book of shadows in case your physical one is discovered. And if you have a digital book of shadows, make sure you have backups of that in either a cloud or a USB or an external hard drive. Whatever you can, make sure you have backups of everything. Rule number six is when you're browsing the internet, make sure you use incognito mode for anything that is a cult or magic or witchcraft related. So when you're browsing witchy things in an incognito window, it's also best to have just a normal window open which is for Facebook or YouTube or mundane websites like that. So you can easily switch between them using alt and tab. So the idea of using incog mode is that no trace is left behind so you don't have to worry about someone discovering your internet history because it is not saved when you browse in incog mode. Incog mode also disables cookies and trackers so when you go back to non-incognito mode on the web you then don't get ads recommended to you about the witchy things you've searched. So it's just a really good way to keep your mundane web surfing and your occult web surfing separate from each other. Rule number seven is to make sure you keep up appearances with your family and make sure that you try to maintain a good relationship with them. So this is a pretty much a given 
Uh, you, you don't really want to have a nasty relationship with your family regardless, but it really does help, especially when you're a broom closet witch, just because having a good relationship means that they're more likely to tolerate you if you do accidentally get found out as a witch. So the main premise of this is to act normal, do lots of mundane things, and you know, just do things that don't give away the fact that you're a witch. The important thing to remember with this rule is don't let your family's actions or beliefs about witchcraft make you bitter. So they're still your family, they still love you even if they don't like witchcraft. Don't let it make you bitter, they're still your family. Rule number eight is to try to read ebooks or digital books instead of physical books. The reason why I say this is because when you go and buy a physical book from a bookstore, this is much harder to hide than a digital book that you've downloaded on your computer. On my subreddit that I created, r slash witch, I have listed a lot of ebooks that you can download and read for free, and also for any other book that you find, it is worth having a look on pdfdrive.com or book.cc before you consider buying the physical book just because having a digital version is easier to hide. Rule number nine is to try to only use temporary altars. So if you have a permanent altar just make sure it looks like a decorative shelf. I have a whole video on disguising altars in the broom closet which you can find in an iCard or in the description. So if you have a temporary altar set up then try to place it in your room which isn't obvious uh, when people walk past your door and have it in an area in your room that not many people go to. If your room is used a lot as like a um, storage area or like a corridor, I know some people have some really weird layouts of houses, just make sure that your temporary altar isn't in like an obvious place that can be seen straight away. Rule number 10 is to try to keep time away from your temporary altar at a minimum. So please try to stay with your temporary altar as much as you can and, and complete your ritual within that time period before you pack it away. However, if you do have to leave your temporary altar for whatever reason, just cover it with something like a piece of clothing or a blanket and that is a surprisingly good method of hiding a temporary altar. Rule number 11 is when you've laid your tarot cards out in a spread, take a picture of it on your phone and then pack the cards away after you've taken the picture. So this minimises the total time that you have to have your cards out for and really minimises the chances of someone walking in on you while you have a spread out in front of you. This method is great because if you like to kind of reveal your cards one at a time and interpret them one at a time then obviously you're not going to know or remember which card was where when it was in a spread after you packed it away. So just having an image on your phone allows you to remember which card was where and then you can interpret them that way. Rule number 12 is if you cleanse your crystals by moonlight, just select a few at a time. So if you have quite a large collection of crystals, cleansing them all at the same time can look a little bit weird or suspicious, so you can just select a few at a time. Uh, the reason why is because the full moon actually lasts for three days, so it is just as powerful to cleanse your crystals on the day before a full moon and the day after a full moon. So you can actually cleanse most or all of your crystals over three days in three different groups. Rule number 13 is if you do cleanse your crystals by moonlight, then make sure you get up early to pack them away before someone discovers them. This is also a good rule to follow anyway because Crystals like amethyst will fade in sunlight, so it's important to pack them away before the, the sun gets up and everyone else in your family gets up. Number 14 is more aimed at uh, dependent witches living with family, but please keep your room tidy. So this is a really good habit to get into regardless because it just minimises um, your parents or guardians from coming in your room to tidy things up. I know that some kids kind of uh, have quite nosy parents in that way so 
having a tidy bedroom is kind of just a deterrent of that sort of thing. Rule number 15 is when you're viewing something witchy or occult related on a mobile device, make sure that screen's brightness is as low as possible. This prevents people from being able to see what you're looking at when they're quite far away or at a different angle to what you're looking at. Rule number 16 is a tough one to swallow but I recommend that you don't tell anyone of your magical or occult related studies even if you trust them. I made this mistake so I had a good friend a few years ago who I trusted but as soon as I told them that I was into witchcraft and stuff they completely changed their opinion about me and it was it was just not good and I kind of regretted it. So if someone doesn't study witchcraft, doesn't know what it is, then I suggest you don't tell them. But if they are a fellow witch, then it is okay to tell them, but just really make sure that this is okay before you do. But if they are a muggle or whatever, then I don't really recommend telling people about how you're a witch. So rule number 17 is if you've hidden something under your pillow, then don't forget it's there, make sure you remove it as soon as possible. Um, so this is more of a personal one, it's just never really worked for me, I've always got my stuff discovered when I've hidden stuff under a pillow. Um, so it's a good emergency solution but don't keep your stuff hidden under your pillow as a permanent solution. Rule number 18 is to keep your most valuable occult items in a bag with you at all times. So a good way of doing this is to have a a handbag or a backpack with you at all times that has like a few secret pockets and things that you can keep uh, your most expensive or precious mag magical tools like your tarot cards. The basic idea of this rule is that people are much less likely to snoop around your stuff if they are physically on your person all the time. Rule number 19 is to always shop in thrift or charity stores whenever you can. Thrift stores, charity stores and antique stores are a witch's best friend. They are a great budget option for budget witches with not much of an allowance and they are also a great excuse because they are just normal mundane shops that anyone can go into but sometimes you can find some pretty good witchy stuff in there. The last rule, rule number 20, is to make sure that you're non-confrontational and you're mature and friendly when it comes to your craft and when it comes to people asking you about your craft or discovering you red-handed. So the important thing with this rule is to don't let people's judgments make you bitter or make you want to take revenge on them or something like that uh, because the whole point of being a broom closet witch and being part of this community is to give witches a good name so all throughout you know hundreds of years witches have had a horrible name put to them and people always have a preconceived idea of what they think a witch is so basically we all need to help change this preconceived idea and the way that you do that is to make sure that you are non-confrontational, you're mature, you're reflect and you're friendly whenever anyone asks you about what it's what it is you do and why you do the things that you do. Uh, this is especially important if you're a Wiccan because Wicca is a peace-loving, earth-worshipping religion. So you definitely want to maintain the good name that witches are trying to have. Don't let people's judgement or um, opposition to your way of life make you turn sour or change who you are. Make sure that you're friendly, mature and tolerant of other people's opinions. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did enjoy this video please share it with other broom closet witches because I want to help out as many people as possible. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. Any links or any resources that I have mentioned in this video can be found in the description below and if you want to find out any more information on anything I've mentioned and anything to do with the broom closet just visit r slash broom closet witch on reddit 
We've got a huge wiki with lots of detailed information and you can speak to other witches on there too. With that, I hope you have a great day. Please stay safe and blessed be.